Right, we're out here in Lutterdurg uh, State Forest, or State Park, I'm not sure. I think it's Park. Is it Park? State oh, I Park? Don't, I don't know. I'm just riding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Alan, and uh, we've come out, he's brought out his DR650, which is heavily modified, honestly, heavily modified. Alright, so, you bought this second hand, but I don't think it looked anything like this um, as much, right? You've, you've put a nah. few things on it, so, well, what is this for you? Is it a long, long distance? Is it uh, more hardcore? What um, built it up for? So there was six six of us actually bought uh, the DR650 to ride across Australia and the purpose was to do a cross-continental uh, oh, yeah. tour. Um, obviously same bike, less parts to, to carry, we we're going to do it unassisted but uh, look I got this for a steal, I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for it and it was, it, it pretty much has uh, like the seat, the tank, like it was it was a bare bike. Yeah. Someone had big intentions to and just didn't uh, go through to do it. Yeah, and, yeah. and just didn't didn't follow through. So, um, yeah. Look, I don't. Know, I think I was saying before the uh, it sits in the shed. I go. I should sell it. I'm gonna hop on it and have a day like today and go. Wow. Like yeah, why? Awesome. You know. Like <laughs> it's it's yeah. built for. Look, I suppose to answer your question. Built for adventure riding, but look, we're doing some single track and some four drive tracks today. Yeah, I was and, handling it well. And and yeah, it, it goes okay. Like, yeah, yeah. It's it's not a motocross bike, and that's the mentality I think I have to uh, tell yourself. Sometimes. Tell myself yeah, you were, sometimes. You were but ripping uh, it up. Earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, it goes alright. So. Yeah, Alan's not a slow rider. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm not a fast rider either. Not don't fast, worry. But, yeah, but uh, yeah, this thing hauls ass. Yeah. All right, well, um, let's get into your front. You've got quite a lot of things going on there. So, yep. uh, yeah, let's move on there. Yep, no worries. All right, so the first thing when I saw your bike as well, is like like mine, you've made some yep. sort of custom front fairing here. Yeah. So what, what material is that and uh, how so, you about? So this is Polybelt. Um, it's a product very hard to find. It's in the agricultural market and it's also in the in the truck. So they use it between the... Um, over the the axles of the of the semi trailers oh, okay. and like just to stop mud flicking on the bottom of the trailer. Uh, look, I originally had a screen for bikes screen on it. Uh, had a bingle, it was the first thing to go. Yeah, I I wasn't going to pay to put another one on. So yeah. uh, there was a guy who who did some uh, templates uh, actually on YouTube, and uh, yeah, I, I just I made it up. Look, it does need to be a bit higher, but. Yeah, so it's just, it's just a DIY that cost me, I think, ten bucks. Yeah, and you've put uh, that ribbing uh, stuff yeah, on so it, and you've reinforced it from the inside. Yeah, so I'll these. See that later. But, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I have, and from behind you'll see as well. But I've got a little kicker there, and this is just reinforced. Um, these these little pins here, they're quick release um, body pins, automotive. Oh yeah. So you just pop that out, and that comes off in off like two seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's it. Does help. It does help. Keeps the phone out of the weather anyway. So. And you've got a, a pretty crazy looking, I've never seen something that, I mean that looks Mad Max to me. Yeah. That, so <laughs> That's pretty full on. So uh, there's a guy up in Queensland, Hardy Parts. Um, he has a DR, I think he actually sold it now, but he was he, he was um, an ex-school teacher made this. Oh, okay. And he was actually selling it selling for a little while. You'll actually, I don't know what you can see, but I've got the same thing on the, on the oil guard as well. But um, I actually smashed the light. It's two hundred and fifty bucks to replace. Yeah, so, I they're mean, not cheap. Oh, I'm not going. Not cheap. I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, it does look Mad Max. It was raw alloy, but I painted black. Kind of yeah. blend, blend in. So, yeah, right. yeah. So you're running a tool bag. That's not just your tube, is it? Yeah. So that's, that's just tube. tube. Okay. And uh, I've got two small tire levers in each side here. Yep. Um, look, the it, it's of of a DIY fender brace as well, and and this, I suppose, while we're talking down here, the fender. It is an RMZ fender. Oh, okay, so a lot shorter. No, 
No. That's about standard down there. I know if the, oh. if the camera can see yeah, that, yeah. but I've shortened it. So a okay. it's between a motard and a standard. Yeah, all right. I just found with the DR, a bit of weight on the front and this flapping around, because they do stick down a long way, yeah. it, it just kind of grabs in the wind on the highway. So not that we like riding on the highway, no, but don't. but uh, but yeah, it just- it Looks good though. I didn't, I, mean, I didn't even really catch it as not yeah, stock. Yeah, it, it's but, about yeah. 150 mil shorter. Yeah, okay. So. And you're running King's, yeah. King's lights? Yeah, yeah. Look, the adventure bike, you always end up in the dark. Yeah, at some point. <laughs> um, you always end up in the dark. Look, these things are great. Uh, kangaroos in Australia are, are, are pretty pretty solid when you hit yeah. them on, the, on a bike. So the other thing I haven't, I have done, which you can't see, um, I've actually LED upgrade in the in the actual headlight itself. Okay. Uh, that's about 100. 100 times better than a standard yeah, globe. So. It's like a candle. Yeah, it is. So yeah. these wired to a separate switch? Yeah, through a relay, through a okay. separate switch. So you can um, have them on and off anytime? You don't have to yeah. be on high beam? Oh, yeah. no, no, sorry, through the high beam. Through the high beam? Yeah, yeah. through high beam regular okay. uh, switch. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, nice. And you're running the same uh, ram mount mirrors as myself? Yeah, look, they're good. They do serve a purpose, but yeah, I think, I think they will be going. Yeah. Uh, you seen today when we're riding off. I've, I've oh, taken even them mine, off. Yeah, I've they, taken them off. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to put them down because they don't stay up on yeah, the harder stuff, right? They stay. just vibrate off. Yeah, and I find I yeah. smack my head on this on the mirrors a fair bit as well. So obviously, yeah. I ride forward. Yeah. I don't know why there's a lot of weight at the front of this bike, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So, like, yeah, it just look. They're a good product. The concept is there. The idea is there, but they're just. I think for the. I think. This Less heavy off-road use, yeah. then they're fine, right? But the, the balls, yeah. they change shape. They, they don't stay around. They're very soft, obviously, yeah. so you can mount them, but they don't retain that shape. And nah. they just, yeah. Like the GS 1200s and the bigger adventure bikes, I think. Be, yeah, it's a great add-on. But you're not going to be dropping a GS 800. And you, the, the mirror is going to be the last thing you worry about yeah. anyway, I think so. All right, so we're here in the cockpit area. Um, yeah, why don't you start with the... You know, all your switches and uh, what they do, right? Because you've got obviously ones for the lights, but yeah. So I was saying the uh, the, the spotlights are through a switch through a re uh, through a relay. I do have heated grips, uh, oh, okay. which right. are not working. Which is uh, you would have liked it this morning. It would have been nice yeah. this morning, but uh, so I've, all I've done is just a little dash. I, I do have big plans for the cockpit. Take some weight off the handlebars, but uh, currently we've got a GPS ram mount. My Garmin GPS sits on there. My phone, uh, I will be getting a second phone yeah. for GPS use. It's just too risky. Look, the quad lock's good. I think the, the mechanism's starting to fail. And I don't want my main core uh, source of communication out in the Being elements. on there. Uh, yeah. look, look, usually if you have a big off, it's, it's the cockpit area, the mirrors and the screen, it, yeah. that all goes, you know, so. Um, and I mean, like personally, I've said it pretty much on every modified that these things destroy cameras. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, Cornet's one got destroyed. Uh, Ryan's, my other mate's been destroyed. So I think it's a good choice to have yeah. some phone you just have lying around. If you're that fortunate to have, just use that instead. Um, yeah. It really doesn't matter what happens to it. I've, I've, yeah, I've been very lucky. So you watch, we'll ride home and it'll, it'll fail. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then you've got a twin USB yeah, port so, behind there, sitting by so there. So it's kind of hidden, like that's my phone charger. As soon as it's plugged, as soon as the phone's on its cradle, it's plugged in. Yeah. Um, so I'm always running a GPS or something anyway. Something's using a lot of power. There's a twin in the, in the back there. I think the, I think it's a, a five and a 1.5. Like yeah. there's two different volts, volts I think. So. Yeah. Um, I've kind of done my best to hide it as much as possible for weather. Um, because as we know today, it's sunny, then it's raining, it's then it's raining, dusty, then it's yeah. sunny, then it's raining. So that's Victorian weather. So yeah. I mean, it does have a cap that one. Yeah. Well, obviously, when you're charging, you, you can't, can't have use, the cap on. You right? can't use it with the yeah. cap on. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got a vapor dash. So you, you don't. Have, you're not. Well, I mean, the DR only comes with the tacker. <laughs> and uh, so. Speedo. Yeah. Yeah. Spe speedo. Yeah, yeah, speedo. Speedo. yeah. Sorry, that's yeah. the only one. Yeah. Look, this is this is only. So I've I've actually got motard rims for this as well. So oh, I can, really? I can oh, nude, okay. nude it right up and oh, yeah. yeah, make it. It's it's a completely different bike. So that is my second vapor. Um. I don't know what happened to it. It was going good, going good, going good. Then the screen went black, and then it started. 
oh, okay. talking in uh, another language which is not numbers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Sent it back to Vapor, they couldn't fault it. They, they, I mean, couldn't find what was actually yeah. wrong. They, you yeah, don't know what, what yeah. You gotta be careful with the Vapor, like again, if you can see in there, but uh, it's, it, hidden. It's, it's hidden, it has yeah. to be hidden, keep out of the elements. Well, they say they're weatherproof and that kind of stuff, but look. I think the new ones, they have colored GPS. Yeah, the that's ones. They're the, actually really going the gun, up market now. They are, um, yeah. Which I, yeah, and I like them. I mean, especially with this, like, you know, if all you're being told is your speed, the, you know, the Vapor gives you so much more information. Yeah. Now these bark buses, I've never, okay, so they're, a Cherbis, yeah. A Cherbis, yeah. a Cherbis, a Cherbis, a Cherbis. A Cherbis. A Cherbis. <laughs> I haven't seen these before, but they're pretty slim. Yeah, look, they they they're great. Uh, <laughs> they're great summer bark buses. Um, yeah, and they're not going to deflect much. Right? No, no, so, they're not, yeah. which is good. In Victoria, as we know, it does get cold. It would be good to have a bit more of of yeah. uh, wind protection, but but uh, yeah, look, these things have yeah definitely saved. Yeah. Like yeah, I hit a tree hands. today in that little single track shit we're doing. Yeah. I took a bit of bark off anyway. So. <laughs> but uh, on the um, my last modified episode with Chris with his WR, I haven't seen it before, but he had that. I yeah. think you saw that little um, yeah. raised fin, and I think that's a it's a pretty cool mod. I mean, maybe they make it for these, but I I'm going to look into those. I actually went for the Uber Eats style, like put your hands oh, the, inside the, the gloves. Yeah, the gloves, yeah. but it's too hard. <laughs> Probably can't do that on single trail. No, nah, no, nah, you'd get tangled up real yeah. quick. So. <laughs> Look, speaking of bar work, yeah, it is this thing. Look, yeah, that's like what I was about to say. The Rally Moto yeah. steering dampener. Look, it's probably the most expensive mod that I've done to the bike because yeah. everything else has been DIY. But look, that thing there, pfft, such a heavy bike, and in some really snotty, rocky. Well, even on the hot, even on the dirt, yeah, dirt highways we're riding around today. Yeah. Like you just, just ride. You know, like it doesn't matter. Um, that single track helped I, you I had just, to turn it down a bit no or? no i actually pulled the uh return to center yeah the angle no or just so it returned to center easier yeah um okay. yeah because it was because you go slow and you stop and all of a sudden you have that oh, much more force in the dude. bar yeah yeah, yeah it was so right. so hard so. yeah but, um, but on the rocks like we did some pretty rocky sections today as well and it just keeps it in line you know you don't you're not find the bars nah. while trying to keep traction definitely uh, to not boot up yeah definitely not Look, this is the, the I suppose, as I was saying before, oh, yeah. the little kickers. It's just like one mil aluminium, just to keep a bit of profile, I suppose. But I mean, that's like you can tell I'm agricultural. That's just a piece of alley as well. But at least you uh, filed it. Yeah, yeah. I try to make some effort in. safety. Yeah. Safety is number one. <laughs> safety first. So, look, I don't think there's anything else really up here. That yeah. All right. If that's it, then we can go to the middle because uh, yep. you still have. Yeah, there's a lot to get through on this bike. This is going to be a long one. Get, get, a, get a beer in your hands. Yeah, well, we've got a couple, so. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so my uh, my WR has an 18 litre tank. And I think that's pretty big. Yours? I've probably still got 18 litres left in left, mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, it's a beast. It's pretty big. So this is 30, 32? Or? No, I think Safari sell them as a 30 litre. But... Okay. I could squeeze 36 litres into it, so. So what, what kind of range are you getting on this? Haven't tried it. Yeah, because these do what, five, six litres? Five litres per hundred, yeah. Yeah, five. And it doesn't matter, I don't think, Luke, whether it's loaded, unloaded, whether you're squeezing the absolute crap out yeah. of it or putting along, it still does five litres per hundred. Look, look, I've done a carby mod to it, but and this is the first real ride, but look, it was up to here Yeah. Um, this morning. And that's the lowest, the, the the shallowest part of the tank, I suppose you would say. But we've done 150 k's and yeah, it's used no fuel. Good. Like the, yeah. uh, that, the, the high country ride we did in November. Yeah. Um, I only ever fit, well we did. I can't remember what it was until we got to Dargo. It was like 360. Yeah, it was 360, pretty, 360, pretty, something, pretty 400 k's. So again, I only filled it up to the to the top of the wings. So, all right. So when we okay, that was the beginning of the day. How high was it when we went down Billy's then? You'd use uh, quite a bit I'd use, I was actually thinking I'd be going to reserve, uh, okay. going down right. Billy's, yeah. uh, and I'm kind of glad I had the amount well, of fuel that I had in it, because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, for those who don't know what Billy Goats is, it's a pretty hairy hill, I'm glad yes. we're going down it, down not it. up it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, Safari is a good brand, like, I think, obviously we've said a few times, it's an Australian brand. Yeah. Um, Chris had the, uh, the 14 litre on his WR, um, I, I had one of my... I think my DR as well. I can't fault them. They're a good brand, and yeah, um, it's good to have local support as well, and obviously support 
local manufacturers. The biggest thing that, like you said it before, Luke, is it's an Australian brand, yeah. and they're, they're 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 all over the world. Yeah. Um, and off, I'm on a DR forum, on a few actually, uh, and people do have it, it's it's a machine. They break yeah. down. They have they have problems, but Safari are really really uh, really good at assisting and, and, and providing the product straight away. You know. So. Yeah. All right. So this seat, uh, you said this was on it before. You got yep. it. So this looks really custom. I've never. So it's actually a sergeant seat. So they've sergeant, actually got a okay. they've got a gel insert in them. I think. Yeah. Look, rec retail and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they're about seven hundred bucks. Oh wow! All right. Um, yeah. So, and I have not sat on a more comfier seat. Yeah. It's wide. This is. is it's is, is it's a probably wide seat. probably three hundred wide where you're sitting. Yeah. Look, the only problem that I find is, well, it's not a problem. It's a personal thing. I wish the seat was higher. Yeah, just that little bit. So yeah. you're not doing the massive transition from standing to sitting all the time. Yeah. It, it, it's, okay. it, but I mean, look, I'd gladly and easily sit on this. Like we rode from Dargo back to Melbourne yeah, that day. That was I was a long just ride. like <laughs> cruising along the highway, like yeah. on a Harley Davidson. So yeah, and it's nice because obviously it still retains like most trot seats. Yeah, they try to do the aftermarket is retain a thinner front section. So when you are standing up on the pegs and doing that more technical work, you don't your legs aren't pushed out wide. But mm. yeah, I mean that that's a a lot wider than my bike. Yeah. So I, I did get the yeah. name right, didn't I? Yeah, so sergeant, it's de yeah. definitely sergeant seat. So. Yeah. so another thing you have on this bike um, are your steg pegs, and these obviously look like homemade jobs, which I love. Yeah, look, they are they are definitely homemade. Um, nothing like a doorstop can help. Uh, I got a, I got a bit of uh, I got I suppose I got the idea from another guy up in Queensland when I was there, but yeah, these are definitely, definitely homemade, mate. Definitely yeah, homemade, definitely. So. Well, they oh, look, look like they've held up. They, they do, I just noticed now, I do have to adjust one of them, but uh, but yeah, look, they do help. Look, they're nothing, nothing flash, but it's amazing what a little doorknob on the side of your bike can do yeah. to hold you onto the bike. And, and so. fatigue, fatigue oh, wise, it's just, dude. it's like another, it's another world, but. Yeah. And then you have some serious protection going on here as well. You've got some frame, uh, frame protectors, some yep. big ones, and, um, like your case savers as well here. So this looks like an adhesive version. Yeah, so that's that was on the bike, mate. Okay. So all the protection was on the bike um, when I bought it. So like I was saying, the guy I bought it off. He had a lot of freedom. Massive, it. massive. Like, and I, yeah, I got a really good deal. Um, but yeah, like the case savers, they're they're a B and B case saver. They do just self adhesive on. Yeah. Um, these frame guards, I think they're a B and B, but uh, again, they were on the bike when I got it. Yeah. The only thing that I have done and I have noticed is every oh, look, whenever I feel like it, I'll take take them off and clean the sand and the grit and everything oh, and from behind it. Wear on the frame. Yeah, right? well, yeah, I've actually you can there. I don't know you can't see, but I've got some foam rubber yeah. in behind it, so it just kind of helps it a little bit. Uh, and then I've noticed you've got another mod here, which a lot of DR650 enthusiasts do, which is the choke mm. relocation. Yeah. So. Did that break up here, or you just nah. weren't happy with it? Why did you it, do that? It seized. Oh, okay. uh, so the cable actually seized coming to the handlebar. That's where they go there usually. Yeah. Um, removing it from here, I and mean, removing the uh, the lever has actually in turn created problems inside the switch. Because it's not sealed it's now. Not, or? not as sealed. Yeah. So, so a lot of dirt's getting in there. Yeah. So my indicator lever in particular was playing up. So I pulled that apart the day before yesterday. I blew it out. Put some silicon spray just on the plastic. Yeah. Um, it, it is working, but I mean, it is, yeah. Oh, it's DR's it's made it for a reason, but the only reason I took it off, it was seizing up, so. Yeah. And it's just simple, mate, like it, she's just on or off. Yeah. All right, I think that's pretty much it for the middle. Yeah. And um, so yeah, let's move on to the back because you've got a fair few racks going on there, <laughs> Alan. So is this one rack system or is it like two versions? Because this is all straight sort of bar looking stuff. Yeah. Cut CNC and then that's shoe wheel on. So this so the actual pannier racks are Barrett Barrett racks. Yep, yep. Um look I went for the Barrett racks for a couple of reasons. They've got the um rotor packs mount in them again. Uh, oh, in yeah, them ready. In the so, yeah, yeah, so we were going across the desert, right? So we're gonna have no support vehicles. Yeah. And we were looking at the best way to carry water and fuel and keep everything low and, and, and reduce weight where possible. And, and look, they fit on pretty well straight away. So. They're really streamlined as well. I mean, yeah. with a lot of bikes, the right hand side, whichever exhaust, right, is always yeah. that a little bit further from the bike. Um, 
but this, this is actually quite close. Again, quite nice. again, another Australian product, you know, like yeah. Australian made product. Look, look, yeah, we're in Australia, I like supporting our own guys. Um, well, and also, you're not paying the tax for the shipping that, coming the shipping in or anything like that, and support is the support there is here. straight away. Yeah. Look, the only thing that I've, I've noticed today is that the, the, the side, the cross support, yeah. is, is touching the uh, exhaust, but I mean, it's just a bit of fine alignment. But yeah, yeah man, I, I, they've, they've probably done 13,000 Ks with pennies on them, maybe. And then this one here, yeah, this is, this this is quite is, an intricate design. It's not just a old nah, B&B. No, nah, this is, this is not, on, you know? this is a pro billet rack. So it's billet alloy, uh, which is good for weight. The bad, you can't see on the camera, but I have had a bit of a, that, this, this, this is a square. So it turns right around. That was on the back. Oh, okay. I have a little bingle and it has cracked and billet alloy. Once it cracks, it's done. It's gone. Can't it's finished. Care. But um, look, the, I went billet alloy or well, this this particular rack because you can fit straps through anywhere to yeah, tie anything to tie down. Anything you know. So, and look, I have mounted this top box on. Um, if we're going camping and we get went to a bottle, you fill up with ice and you put your beers in yeah, there. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a good idea. <laughs> just just make sure there's nothing in it when you go. So you've obviously moved it to the back so you can put another yeah. bag here and so when you're riding you're not hitting yeah. it right on your back yeah if you had to go on an adventure trip or when you went with us i can't remember what you had now but what would you usually run up here would you always have this box on yeah or? so this box is really good for food okay bang you're into it first aid kit if you wanted to i usually carry my first aid kit in my backpack but yeah food the, the stuff that you want to grab without pulling everything apart yeah yeah and pulling other stuff um, out yeah so so that's always on there yeah that's a permanent. so this is a permanent fixture look i've added these on so I've, i run andy strap pannier bags yeah um and i run uh andy strap i i, I can't remember what it, i think it's a tail bag actually it, okay. it's a little a little duffel bag about this wide again it's top top entry yeah um if i so that ride i, I had the the small bag on top yeah. um, with my ready to grab straight away food and then this was just like dinner and breakfast yeah. i think okay. so and then in here um is usually my tent yeah. tent sitting in here so okay nice and you've got a stain tune yeah. exhaust without the baffle <laughs> right <laughs> can you tell it, yeah it's loud <laughs> it is loud Scares the ruse away, mate. Yeah, ruse I mean, and rabbits and birds and everyone else. So. It's not hard to know when you're right behind me either because you just hear that rap, rap, yeah, rap, yeah. It's, um, I think I, I had one of mine, um, and I think it was one of the first. I actually, I wore my DR in Sydney and then drove it down. It's when I was in uni and like didn't have money to ship stuff, but uh, I remember my first day of uni and pulled it in. All my mates came around to have a look at it. And the first time I started, it set the car two cars' alarms off <laughs> behind me, right? and at the, t like at the time, I was like, you yeah, know, really funny and, you know, pretty cool showing off how loud your exhaust is, but it, it sounds good. And the 650, it just it's, yeah. it's, it pumps it. Yeah, it's, it sounds nice. Uh, yeah, look, it, <laughs> I actually put the baffle back in it last night. Yeah. I went for a ride. I went, I can't ride this thing. It sounds, sounds like a posty bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've <laughs> actually, like, the baffle is, is about that, it used to be about that long. Yeah. And it it kind of angles up, so the, obviously it's not direct airflow. I've yeah. chopped it off, so it's just the the spark arrestor i suppose That's you would it, say yeah. in the back yeah. and even that like i just and i think it it, it could be it could be in my head but uh I, I think the bike runs a lot better breathing like with the, that with the free flow sort yeah of without without the baffle like i again i'm not a i'm not a mechanic i don't know but yeah. it just feels better and it could be, people would probably say it's just the noise yeah it's just in your head right but, yeah but it, few people say that oh well, you see me today like i've I've done another mod, like the, the Carby mod, and yeah. it, it, it's just, it's becoming the bike that, it won't do everything great, but it'll do everything good. Yeah, yeah, that's right, it'll keep up. Hmm. Yeah. No, I was fine. You're keeping up. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, this Vendor Eliminator, is that a homemade? Uh, that? Look, again, that was on the bike when oh, I bought before. it. I'm going to say it's probably either homemade or, yeah. look, I, I have seen um, aftermarket. Yeah. Fender Eliminators yeah. available, similar, similar yeah. design. But look, that's just a piece of aluminium. You can this almost looks like a KDM indicators action. Oh, I don't know like why they're in or something. But yeah, they're an eBay special. Look, oh, I okay. took yeah. I took the big square ones off because they were fouling on this on this side. You can't see, but they were fouling on the on the pannier yeah. racks. So, if you want to sell something on the DR forum or any website, if you put an indicator up, 
Yeah. Within the day. Oh. Within the day, a genuine DR six fifty indicator, you can get thirty five bucks for that. And mirrors. I mean, handlebars. Yeah, handlebars. Uh, um, uh, not handlebars. The headlights. Yeah, like, the whole right. lot. Like they are a hot commodity. Yeah. In the DR they community. Are, they are. <laughs> you got a. Um, you have a tool tube. Yeah. Right? But this isn't the stock sort of no. go get a pipe and. No. Put it on. So oh, it, 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 yes and no. Um, so Vince Strang motorcycles in, in Inverell, he yeah. sells actual tool tubes. Yeah. And these, uh, they're actually a three inch um, waste water oh, okay. um, plug. That's oh, all wow. it is. Yeah, yeah that's, okay. that's all it is. Um, and it goes into some 90 mil PVC. Uh, I think that's 80 mil actually from memory. But um, yeah, the original tool tube is about this big and puts a pencil case and a screwdriver and yeah. a pair of pliers yeah. in it. I can rebuild my whole motorbike with that. So I've got electrical kit and a uh, I've actually got a larger tool, uh, tire lever, and, and some other tools in there as well. It's about six hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 that's what she okay. said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, look, the only other thing I suppose to mention is yeah. is the rear tail light. I've got an LED one in there. But the, the original ones they vibrate and blow. Oh, okay. Yes. I don't know whether yours yeah. did that, but yeah, yeah. I've since I put the LED one in, I've got it's again probably done twenty thousand k's with that LED. There's also um, I think in the US you guys don't have. They don't have the flash, uh, the flush mounted one. They have no, some it's, it's, big sticking out ones. So yeah. I think they do a RM250 or something yeah. um, switch. Yeah. But in Australia, we, I don't know, we get that as a stock. Yeah. All right, so we were talking earlier and you've got the same tire combination as yeah. I do, the 606 on the rear with yeah. the Pirelli M20, M21? Yeah, M uh, uh, Rally Scorpion. Scorpion 21, yeah, 21 on the front. I think, yeah. Awesome combo. Oh, look, I can't yeah. fault it. I like it. Oh, um, I can't fault the 606 on the back of this. It's all to do with air pressures, I think, too. Yeah. Um, look, I've, I'll talk a little bit about the XR600, which I did have before this. And um, it was 606 front and back, best combination. Best combination. Yeah. Tried it on this, the front washed out okay. all yeah. the time. Um, so talking to a few other people, the Pirelli Scorpion, uh, rally is a good front one, but yeah, definitely 606. Um, I've got the it, it's weighted as well because I've got a, another rim lock on there, yeah, on the back. Um, so you've got the big ones, the sorry, there's like big balls, yeah, the, the balls, yeah, 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 the balls. So, Look, I run a super extra heavy duty tube okay. in the back, yeah. like it's I think it's an eight mil thick tube, okay, well, plus yeah. plus the tire. And look, touch wood, yeah, um, I have not had a flat. In a while. Well, Ever. Ever. All right. Yeah. Okay. Ever. Yeah. Touch that wood again, mate. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, can't fault it. Especially in the tougher terrain. And I mean, I just think it's the perfect balance between, um, highway sort of or longevity yeah, yeah. And, and actual performance off road. Yeah. I mean, you can thrash it and it's just that hard compound and it really yeah. doesn't cut up that easily. All right. Let's move, uh, let's move on to the center. Yep. Okay. So you have, Aftermarket suspension on this thing, right? Yeah, I have, I have, I have. I've got, uh, well, it's, it's yes and no. So it's original suspension done with some work done to it. So okay. um, when I was on the Sunshine Coast, I went to MPE suspension and they'd done the MPE, suspension. Yeah, yeah okay. MPE. Um, so they've done a, a, I can't remember whether it was a gold valve uh, shims in the original shock. Um, but when I purchased the bike, it had a nine kg Vince Strang rear shocky on it, okay, yeah. which is quite, probably if you go by the Technic uh, guidelines and everything, it's probably too heavy for what I am and yeah. what the weight is. But okay. you see me today, I can push it pretty hard, and, yeah. and I think yeah, the the, the stronger spring rate on the back for me, because they are such a prehistoric suspension. Yeah, they do have prehistoric suspension. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it's it doesn't buck you. It doesn't bottom out, I don't know whether you, yeah. I, my, I, my, my DR had full stock and yeah. yeah, I mean it compared to my WR, which is still stock suspension, worlds apart. Yeah. Like this, yeah, it is, it's agricultural. It is very agricultural. Yeah. Look, I'd love, uh, I was saying earlier on, um, I'd love to put a Wilbur shock in it, but I can't yeah. justify the By money. But I mean, like, I think yeah, that, that's, that's a good point, right? If you're doing more adventure riding, to destinations on tarmac, gravel roads. Are you? Do you really need to upgrade your no. suspension? You know, like you just have to start weighing the pros and cons of how much money you want to throw at suspension. Because yeah. look, 
it, you'd probably say it's one of your best mods on this bike is the suspension but yeah like you said do you want to spend three grand to have this race spec suspension and and, and and like i said in the opening was it it's not a motocross bike yeah it's it is an aid bike look i can de I'm, I'm sure people that own drs will put drs where they want to put a dr yeah. whether it be <laughs> single track or up a rocky trail but the suspension same with every bike you, you build it the same as a car you build it and then you put suspension in it yeah that's, that's, yeah, that's just right. what you do you know so these aftermarket pegs or are they the uh, drs no they are aftermarket i think they're actually an sm moto that come with the center stand okay yeah um they're a lot lower or high i can't remember which way the drs are but they're a horrible peg yeah um i'm probably going to go steg pegs yeah. I'm probably going to go steg pegs. Okay. I had them on the XR. I like them. With the steg pegs um, on this bike, I think with the brake, you can't get a happy medium. Like, it's... Like, look at that stick. Like, your foot's... Yeah, it's a lot lower. You know what I mean? You're supposed it, to have it, a flat, right? Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be flat. And I, yeah. Without modifying the brake lever... It's, yeah, it's going to be on such yeah, an angle. So you, yeah, so with a steg peg, at least you'd be able to... Rather than lifting your foot all the time, just, it's just still going to be a bit more pivot, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, <laughs> I've ridden it for how long now? Yeah, it, you're it, just yeah, used I, to it, right? I'm used to it. So. Yeah. so this center stand, I've always wanted to have one of them on my bike. I've never had one on my bike, but I mean, even now, it's like like we're talking about servicing. Um, you said even packing your packing, packing adventure your bike gear. up. Yeah. You know, it's just such a handy mod. Yeah. Oh, look. For the weight. Who cares about the weight for the versatility and the usability yeah. of it? Like, yeah. even if you wanted to, like, if you know you're going across, just say you're going across the Simpson Desert and you need every millimeter of of, of fuel, yeah, yeah, you can set it level and yeah. fill it right at the top. Yeah, well, if it's right. on the lean, you kind of got dramas, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, no, they're awesome, awesome look, mods. Changing tire, look, it's changing tire. Yeah, changing that's the tire, same thing, right? Like it's just adjusting, your, adjusting your, your chain. Even, so, look, Even just servicing and working yeah, on the bike, right? On, Everything's just a level. I don't know if you put your bike on a. On I a have a, like a little lift, lift, lift stand. Lift stand. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, as soon as you're home, put it on a lift stand. It takes up less room in the garage. Yeah, that's like right. It's just better. Yeah. So, look, the one thing I will change, look, speaking with brakes, I suppose, is they're very spongy. Yeah. You're gonna they're, put some braided lines. I'm on. gonna put. I will put braided lines yeah. on it. Okay. Uh, and I find that uh, brake fade in the back, in particular, is pretty big. Pretty okay. big. But I mean. And I haven't come unstuck for not being able to stop. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, let's let's move on to the front. Yep. And my one leg's slowly dying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, so I had to change, change my knees, up. mate. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a bash plate on this. Yep. Which I think everybody should have on their bikes if you're going to go anywhere off road. Yep. Is that a BMB as well? It is BMB. Yeah? Not okay. Australian product, mate. Um. I had the BMB on my idea as well. It yeah, took look, everything. It, man, it had some good dents on it. Um, they say it resonates the engine noise back up to your cockpit area, but look, I, I, I don't, I don't know whether that's true. Well, at the same time, like with my WR, you just put that foam, yeah, that um, yeah. NVH sort of foam in there, and yeah. I, I've, yeah, I don't find it an issue. No, nah, look, honestly. I've been very lucky. Um, it came, again came with the bike, so I haven't yeah. had to. Haven't I haven't had to sponsor BMB, but maybe they can sponsor me. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, but but look, yeah, it, it it it's copped a lot of. Like, yeah, it's copped a lot. It has copped a lot. I know it has. So. And this is that custom you were talking about before, the same as your headlight. Yeah, it's a hardy parts. Yeah. He's he's done a um. I'll open it up there a little yeah. bit better. It, it's just a radiator protection. It's better than the wire one that's originally on the DR. And you're running a fork brace? Yeah, so warp nine fork brace. Look, it's... Why did you decide to do that? Just from the bigger hits, twisting, or...? The front end twists a lot. There's a lot of fork. And I know there is in the uh, in the more enduro bikes, but yeah. these aren't a very big uh, diameter fork. But there's a lot of fork and a lot of movement yeah. um, in in these forks. And look, they're, they're built for a price and you... you pay for these little mods and you, yeah. you build the bike um the fork brace was my first mod uh with the front end and then the steering dampener but the fork brace oh, mate, massive difference massive difference, massive yeah. difference. you go around a corner and the front wheel would want you to be turning and the front wheel would want to turn the other way without it yeah like is that that much slack yeah like it's oh that's 
a bit of an exaggeration, but it, yeah. it, it is very, very sloppy in the front end. So. And this, the front suspension has also been reworked, right? It has, yeah. And so, MPE as well? Um, originally, yes. Uh, they had 0 0.5, 0 0.5 kg springs in the front and just standard oil weights and all that kind of stuff and yeah. levels. Um, I've actually, again, when I purchased the bike, I came with a whole box of spares and in the bottom there was some gold valve emulators. Oh, wow. Just sitting there. So, uh, <laughs> I, I sent it to MPE with the gold valve emulators and uh, I think they've got to drill the dampener rod, another oil reservoir for the dampener rod. Yeah. Put the gold valves in, put the 0.5 springs in the front end. It helped. I've actually upgraded the springs and, yeah. and oil, so I've put a 0.65 in the front end of it and I've actually increased the oil so it's 120 mils below the fork cap. So I, what is it usually, 150? I think it's a little bit more, like 150, 160, okay. something like that. Right, yeah. so, so you put a I've actually put, a, and it's a heavier weight oil yeah. as well. So <clears throat> look, uh, you see me today and you saw on the on the uh, high country yeah. ride, I, I, I can push <laughs> it and I think the heavier suspension on the front end, it just, yeah, look. Yeah, I mean like, I think I've seen some, some video of somebody on a 650 launching it, it's in my head, I don't know where from, but as soon as he sort of jumped and made that uh, impact, I mean, almost like the bash plate touched the yeah. touched the ground. And when I saw you today, I mean, first I just got off my bike and I just looked at you and you just hammered up that jump and, and launched it down. I thought man, it looked like it was 100% controlled. Like it didn't yeah. look like it was bottoming out. It just looked right. Um, I look, yeah. what you see me do today, I probably shouldn't, but I would do it with saddlebags and load it up with camping yeah, gear. That's just, that. but, yeah, it'll take it. It'll take it, you know. And you're part of some club here. Yeah, the DR650 Club of Australia. Plug it. Plug it, yep. <laughs> Facebook, get on it. There it is. <laughs> nice sticker. Close up. up. Not bad. Um, yeah, look, that page, mate, I know you're you're part of that, our county member, but uh, yeah, it's good to get people's some inputs. And, and I hope, I hope, I hope some of this stuff uh, yeah, it either gets good or bad reviews and it, yeah. people can take it out of it, you know, like, uh, like I said, I, I'm not... Yeah, I'm I not, mean, also in saying that any questions anybody has, yeah, like, yeah. if you pop it in the comments, I will ask Alan yeah. and I will get back to you, right? So yeah. that's what it's about. Um, this obviously has a lot of kit on it and you've spent a lot of time on it. There's so. more time, I suppose. Look, I'm, yeah, I WD-40 it when I get home and give, give it a good oil clean. Looks yeah. good, you know, so. Yeah. I suppose the biggest thing, uh, one of the, most important things is the uh, just reflect us just to be able to be seen, but on this yeah. side it serves a bit different purpose just where the brake line oh, it's actually so it doesn't scrub, yeah. The, uh, so, fork. so yeah. I went to I can't remember. Look, at, it's really bad. This is there's a motorbike suspension company in Geelong that re yes. that serves it all. I can't remember his name, he's on the yeah, we'll put that in the comments yeah, anyway. But gonna... but uh, Chad's he, Chad's off road, yes, it is Chad's yeah. off road, yeah. So the last serve, look, it's probably done a thousand k's uh, since that service, and I did notice um, wear marks where the the um, the front brake line was yeah. rubbing into the actual fork. So I thought I'd yeah. get onto that. So, all right, so we're coming to the end of the video now. So, if I was just coming to adventure riding, and I think for me, for myself, the DR six hundred and fifty was my first adventure bike. Um, it, if you are back in that position or for anybody in that position who's looking at the dr 650 it's such a versatile bike cheap easy to fix maintain will go forever a lot of people go for this bike so what would your first mods be your first three mods to um you know improve your adventure ride well fuel range is one i can't go past the elephant in the room yeah or the size of the, the size elephant of in the room. <laughs> look that's kind of a double-edged sword too like depending on the adventure riding you're doing but for uh, for me when i was building this bike i needed long range yeah so probably fuel would be one um fuel suspension definitely and then uh some kind of luggage system uh that's going to be easy uh, yeah the biggest thing that i found with luggage i've done the giant loop scenario the, the actual giant loop yes the one that goes over around yeah they're great. They are a great thing for an enduro bike, but uh, when you're actually in and out of them all the time, a, a top access, everything at the bottom you can't get. Oh, right? Yeah, I've heard, so of, I've look, heard that complaint. And look, a lot. the product is is super well made. It, it, yeah. is, it is made for a purpose. 
Um, but yeah, look, it'd be fuel, suspension, and luggage would be the three that yeah. I'd be looking at. So, I mean, like I've said a few times on this video, I keep repeating myself, but I mean, this has got a lot of modifications on it. So is there anything actually that you would want to put on in the, uh, in the short term or long term that you haven't, you're not quite happy with yeah. or something you want to change? Yes, definitely. Um, the front end, the cockpit, not happy with it. Yeah. Uh, well, I shouldn't say not happy. I've made it my own, but I, I've, I definitely want to go a frame mounted cockpit, I think. So one that's rigid, that one that's it's not going to move yeah. with, the, with the bars. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Just take some weight off the bars, like the headlight's heavy, yeah. the GPS is heavy, the speedo's heavy, everything added up has weight to it. Yeah. Um, I'd take the spotties off and have a little light bar. Um, look, again, they're expensive though, they're expensive. And for the amount that I do now, I, I think I'd probably have a crack at DIY on one. Yeah. Oh yeah, same, same with me. I mean, it's not, if you're handy with a tool, it really isn't going to be that hard no. to make your own frame mounted. No. It'll take a weekend. And even if you don't get it right the first time, like mine, certainly I didn't get mine right the first time. Yeah. It's going to be something you're going to work on. And, yeah. but you know, you should enjoy that. Make it your own. Just like Alan said, nobody else has this. You know? no. And even this morning before we took off at Macca's, some guy came yeah, up. Some guy was like, oh, what's, what's going that? on there? What's yeah. that? You know? So, yeah. Oh, it is a unique beast, mate. She's, uh, yeah, it is a unique beast. Yeah, it's always it's always uh, it's always awesome seeing a bike like this, and especially with all the mods. I mean, it's easy to buy a bike and spend if you have the money. You've got a deep pocket, spend ten grand even, right? Mm. Have top of the line everything on it. But when it's something that somebody's thought about, has trialed a few times, and is finally on one thing, that's the best thing when you say to somebody, you know, why have you done this? And they yeah. give you a proper answer, not just always oh, the best thing on the market yeah you know there's a reason behind it but that's what i really like it's funny you say like you <laughs> you try something i seem to always go back to the original thought yeah <laughs> yeah that's right like this little bracket here i was looking at putting it down underneath and trying to make it less agricultural yeah. i suppose but i just keep coming back to there because it it's, it, 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 yeah. it's there it's 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 protected by my bar. It's the light switches are easy. The phone. Th this is the biggest concern, but I mean, it's it's yeah. all there, you know. Yeah. Like it's, uh, yeah. That's that's uh, Mark Two. That one, I think. So. Mark Two. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. It's a good filing. Good filing. Well, thanks for coming out. No uh, I know it was short notice, but no, no, it was good. Thank you very was... much. Appreciate you showing it around, and um, yeah. I'm sure uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of feedback and comments, and I'll yeah. definitely get that back to you. Yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Cheers. Thanks, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. No worries.